Hello and happy Christmas to you all. You're very welcome to Timon Family Resource Centre's online Christmas art workshop. In this video I'll show you how to make five beautiful Scandinavian style Christmas tree decorations from clay. I hope you enjoy it. So in the pack that you've picked up from the centre you should have a plastic cup, a piece of clay, a little piece of a straw, a couple of different pieces of lace, a little matchstick, a piece of sandpaper, a little piece of a plant and some strings. You'll also have some baking paper and then what you'll need from home is just a little bit of water and a rolling pin. So let's get started. Now the baking paper is to stop our clay from sticking on if you're using a chopping board or your table or whatever. The baking paper will stop the clay to sticking. So the first thing is get a piece of clay. Um, I'm just choosing this, this size just to, this will probably make one, one and a half. So I'm just going to roll this out a little bit. Uh, you'll need to roll it nice and thin and even, uh, but not too thin so it becomes fragile and get it nice and flat and what tends to happen as well is it can be kind of fat on one side and skinny on the other um, but I just kind of keep gently rolling until I get the thinness that I want and it's nice and even depth wise so the next thing I do then is take the little plastic cup and I don't hold it by the um, actual cup part because it tends to bend. So I hold it by the end spout, uh, stalky thing. Uh, so first thing I do is I mar gently mark out the circle like that. Give it a little wiggle so that it hits all sides. And why I don't press it all the way through. I just mark it out roughly. Um, and that's to give me an idea of where everything's going to go. Always remember that you're going to have your little... Um, hole somewhere in the top. I don't know if you can see that there but I mark out the little hole so that I don't end up cutting out part of my pattern. So I'm going to start with the the little uh, plant. This kind of looks like a Christmas tree to me so I'm going to just press that in there just a little bit trying not to press the outsides and, and, and make a mark on the actual outside part of the clay. So that's just secure there so I can start to roll it. And then I put this on top because I don't want to have any stickiness going on. And then take your rolling pin and just gently start at the outside and roll in back and forth a little bit. Not pressing too hard but firmly enough until you feel that it's quite even and you can't really feel the plant anymore. And take that off and you can see that it's really nicely pressed in there and then starting on the outside don't try and pick it out from the inside obviously because you'll mark your clay so lifting the plant out from the outside really gently and lifting up rather than trying to pull it out and then you get this gorgeous impression in your clay and then I'm going to cut out around my circle again now that I know where my plant is going so I'm going to line it up again and then press down really hard don't press on the cup because it'll make a squish shape so give it maybe kind of just kind of twiddle it around and around and then you can pull the outside away just to be absolutely sure you're not going to damage the shape inside and then what will happen is it'll probably stick in the cup so what you can do then is give the cup a little tiny press squeezed and it pops out. Now, I think I've made my hole actually too close to the edge there, which is not great because it won't be that stable. So I'm going to press and give the straw a little twist like that. And what I'm going to do is just very gently rub away the mark that I made earlier in the wrong place. If you do find you've made a mistake like I have and you, you want to get rid of it, you can use just a tiny little uh, dab of water and run your finger very gently over it back and forth and it will eventually 
rub away. And actually what, what's kind of nice too, I think, just to make it nice and smooth, is to get a little tiny drip of water on your finger and, and run around the edges like that and smooth them down because they can be a little bit fluffy or something. You know, they can kind of be a little bit, leave little burrs on the edges. So if you get your finger and make it just a little dab of water and just smooth out those burrs, then it will just be a little more professional. Then very carefully set that aside to dry. Again, I'm going to mark out very gently my where I want my circle to be and mark out my little hole for my string. And then I'm going to take the little um, piece of lace that you have included in your pack. And I like to press it directly across, kind of like a Christmas bauble. So again, just pressing it really gently to secure it so it doesn't move when you start to roll. Pressing it down and rolling really gently. And then you have your lovely impression of your lace. Now, here's probably a common mistake. What you can probably see in that, that I have pressed a little too lightly on the right hand side. And this is probably a lovely depth here. So you could be aware of that, that to make sure that you're pressing evenly on both sides. But I'm not going to go back and redo it. So we'll just cut that out. And again, you can see these burrs that have come up. So again, get your finger with a little bit of water and just press these down, press them away and get your little straw, push your hole through and you've got your second one made. Next thing I'm going to use is this piece of lace see my little circle there you can try a triangle you could do the whole thing if you wanted I suppose what I like to do is take it halfway up the bauble so or the circle rather and so it looks like an old-fashioned bauble that's decorated halfway on the top so again my hole for my string is gonna go around there again securing it a little bit with my fingers pressing over my piece of baking paper and starting to roll. So you're going to roll back and forth and maybe even halfway through just check if the lace has pressed in well enough into the clay. I just love pulling these away. They just look so magical. Wow. Cool. So then I go back with my cup. And there we have our third one, which I think is beautiful. So now on to our fourth piece. Uh, so again, I've rolled it out. I'm going to take my cup again and mark it gently so I know where my circle is. And then I'm not going to put in my little string hole because this uh, piece I'm going to actually puncture with lots of holes in a pattern. You can press one end of your straw like that with your thumbnail to make a little teardrop shape and just give it a little squeeze to make sure it's uh, even. So I'm going to I'm going to make a circular pattern here with little, the little teardrop shapes. And so that I know uh, roughly how to mark it out, I'm going to imagine that it's hands on a clock. So. I am going to start at 12 and then do six, three and nine. But what I don't want to do is go too close to the edge of my circle because otherwise it will be really weak. So you want to come in a little bit like that and leave it some room to make a hole, okay? So I start at 12, mark that out, move down to six 
and then I'm twisting the straw so that the pointy sides of the oval are pointing outwards to the three and the nine. And then I lift it very carefully and use the same oval side of the straw to pop those through. And this way I have a guide with my four quarters and then I can begin to build the, the design on the inside of those holes. So I'm going to do three more holes in between each quarter. One, two, three and I'll continue the whole way round marking out one two three in between each quarter and then pop them all out afterwards lifting carefully again and using the same oval side of the straw to pop those through Then to finish off my design, I'm going to switch my straw around and use the circle end of the straw and put a lovely perfect circle in the centre. Then flip the straw around again and use the oval side and just put four more holes evenly opposite each other. One, two, three, four. Lifting carefully, popping those four out, and it's ready to be cut. Smoothing off the burrs, and that's the fourth one made. So for the last one, I have rolled it out, I've marked it out, and I'm going to use the little matchstick that's in your pack. You can do whatever design you like. Um, this is just a design that I found easy and it uses the uh, times on the clock again. So we've got, we're going to make a little mark, a little tiny square basically. And again, don't go too close to the edge, come in a little bit. So I'm going to keep the matchstick nice and square on each time. I'm not going to twist it or anything. I'm going to keep them all square and flat on to me. I'm going to make the 12. There's the 6 the three and the nine. And then in between those spaces, I'm going to put just one dot at an equidistant halfway along, just to make a nice little circle of dots. And then I'm going to put one in the center. And then I'm going to start to bring the snowflake pattern out and it's more dense in the middle. So we're going to put a dot very close to that central dot and then one directly above that towards the 12. Then we're going to go down to the six we have a dot just below that and a dot below that again. And then I'm going to go a double space and put a dot in the middle of that there because we want that impression that the snowflake is sprinkling outwards. So we'll do the same on the sides to the right of the central square. Push in, push in another close, then jump a double space out to the three. Towards the nine, close dot, a close dot, and then jump a double space. I'm not going to do an extra dot in here because my string hole is going to be there and that will be enough for that space. So I'm going to do the diagonals and we're going to move from the central square out to this diagonal here. So I'm going to make an imaginary line and bring a dot right underneath that one and across from this one. And then I'm going to go down with the corner here very close to that one and do another dot. Then jump a double space Then we start maybe up here, close to the centre, another one close to that going diagonally. Hmm, that's quite close, that's fine. And then we'll start down here on this line, and quite close, and then jump double space. And then the last corner, one cl quite close in here, one quite close. These ones seem to be a little closer, but that's all right. It's organic. Then we take our straw and punch out our little string hole. 
now is the part where you want to really fix those lovely little holes. Take your little matchstick and it's going to be like a sewing action because if you uh, want to define these little holes a little bit more, you need to press them right through, don't you? But if you pull that back out, it'll pull loads of clay with it. So you want to push it down, maybe even give it a little wiggle on it square up, down, side, side, and then pull it right through. And then you get a much better defined hole. So you just repeat that the whole way around, leaving space for your matchstick to pop out the back. It's a little bit tricky, a little bit fiddly. Side, side, up, down, nice square, and pull right through. It'll take a little bit of time just to go through each hole and just make sure it's lovely and smooth. And then what will happen is you'll end up on the back with burrs like that. Once you have all the holes pushed through, leave the piece to dry upside down. And then when it is uh, dry, you can use the little piece of sandpaper in your pack just to really gently sand off those burrs, but only when it's dry. And then it'll be smooth front and back. So drying times will vary. If you leave them out in the air to dry, they'll probably take a few days to dry properly. But you can speed up this process by putting them in the oven at a really low heat. I put mine in the oven at about 50 degrees for about 10-15 minutes, watching them carefully. And then I just turned off the oven and left on the light and that gives it enough heat to just keep drying. But you can keep repeating this process very slowly and see how you get on. Just don't let them burn. If you really liked the clay, it's available in lots of places. I got mine in Spectrum Art Supplies on the main street in Wexford. Um, how I like to string them up, uh, you can do it whatever way you like, but the way I like to do it is um, to take the string and to line up the two ends, give it a good solid pinch in the, in the middle, and then push it through the front, open that loop, and then bring the two strings through. And then you can just kind of rock it back and forth gently like that till it pulls through. Um, don't pull it too hard because depending on what way you've dried them in the oven or by air dry, they might not be perfectly dry. Um, but it just gives it a little bit more substance at the front and you get that nice colour there. So I hope you all enjoyed making the tree decorations. I really enjoyed making the video. Don't forget that there's a gift bag in your pack with some tissue paper so you can wrap up one of your decorations and give it to someone special if you like. Have a lovely Christmas. Bye.